So thank you for uh, clicking on this body hair usage presentation. Hope it'll be interesting for you. That's not me on the front, so no need to worry about that. So why is body hair used? And I'll explain the body hair that we do try to employ. Traditionally, we look at the usage of body hair whereby the patient has extensive loss, can be a Norwood 4 or 5 or a 6 uh, hair loss sufferer. And they've literally got insufficient scalp donor to be able to meet the goals that they've set for themselves. And so body hair can be utilized in synergy with scalp hair to further then give them that donor potential. Or it can be used whereby patients have had their scalp hair exhausted uh, or damaged through previous strip or even FUE surgery. We're seeing quite a lot of decimation in FUE, over harvesting. Or it can actually be through trauma or through an illness that the patient has suffered. And we can see on the examples here of a patient that had strip surgery, quite a big scar, but the good thing is it was localized. You know, strip scars are very localized. They don't take up all of the donor area. And if the strip is not too bad and the the patient hasn't miniaturized under we can harvest from under the scar this patient did have some miniaturization underneath so as well as having the problem the strip it's the impact of the strip scar on the donor and the patient on the right had more FUE very poor extraction pattern and over harvesting which in some ways is worse because it can render the whole safe zone unsafe where uh, strip scarring could be more localized. We can harvest normally above and below it, keeping in mind that we need to keep hair above the scar to cover it and below it if there's no uh, sign of miniaturization. And on the right-hand side where there's donor decimation from FUE, it can make it a little bit harder. And we, on these uh, type of cases, can use beard if it's a very good source for the patient. At BHR Clinic, Dr. Bazanga prefers to use beard or chest hair. He finds that stronger and it's probably going to give the best result for the patient. We do avoid wet hair, um, pubic hair, armpit, belly hair, leg hair, or arm hair, etc. A, because these hairs, you know, they're very fine, vellus, and very low hairs per follicular unit count. And also, they can be very, very prone to falling or to DHT blockers, which I'll explain a bit later on. So, we try to um, go on a tried and tested route of beard hair and chest hair for the patient that's got good, strong chest hair. And it can be used as a filler and uh, a beard hair, even in my case, you can see on the left hand side where the uh, beard hair has been harvested from and on the right hand side you can see the darker part on the crown which are beard hairs that actually have softened over the years they did feel very much coarser and stiffer when transplanted um, and they have, have certainly softened a little bit over the years what we call recipient dominance which probably can be for another topic so beard hair is very good more for the crown not for the hairlines and in my case personally it's been a very good option to have in synergy with my uh, scalp donor Another usage of beard can be going into scars. And here we have a case whereby the patient had very severe scarring. The donor was not good enough to give the amount of grafts needed. And so we went into this patient's beard with quite a few thousand grafts over several surgeries. And placing it into scar tissue is a little bit different. It's avascular, so you need to go lighter on density where there's going to be more chance of survival for the follicular unit and also at the angles that will be good enough to get into the blood supply and here we had a great result using purely beard for this patient so what are the considerations when it comes to compatibility and i'll be looking at what's called alliteration we're going to use letter c so we look at coarseness how coarse is the hair we look at the color of it the curl the count the cycle and in any contraindications. So the coarseness is quite evident. If they've got fine hair on their scalp and coarse beard, it may not be able to be used unless we use it in a way that it's really a filler. And the color of the hair needs to match quite well. On the cases on this presentation, it's black on black or gray on gray. I do recall a patient had very fine blonde hair and a big coarse ginger beard, and we were not able to offer surgery we look at the curl and that can be killed by shaving very short if that's the patient's wish or if they wish to have the hair longer you can really relax that curl through gels and through other styling products so that isn't always a problem we look at the count how many follicular um on the follicular unit how many hairs per follicular unit it won't be three or four as it is with scalp hair it's going to be one or two normally that's a consideration and so you want to try to get beard hair with good quality uh, with a good count which is why we sort of edge away from using leg hair 
or arm hair because it's very vellus and it's normally one hair per follicular unit and not going to give you the best result. We look at the cycle, keeping in mind that the anagen phase is very much shorter on body hair. Chest hair has a shorter anagen phase uh, than the beard hair and the beard hair has a shorter anagen phase than the scalp hair. So that's again why we try to look at that hair will be growing more or if you're going to use chest hair, try to shave it two or three weeks prior to surgery. And so any hair visible at the surgery date will then be in the anagen phase. We can transplant that and hope then for faster growth on the scalp. And the last C is contraindications. And I talk from personal experience when I was on a DHT blocker that my body hair got weaker. My beard was fine. My chest hair, my arm hair, my leg hair got weaker. So one of the considerations if you're having body hair is to see the effect of a DHT blocker. What you don't want to do is have loads of body hair transplanted and then go on to a DHT blocker that may then inhibit the growth of the body hair. So there's some of the um, considerations, coarseness, colour, curl, count, the cycle of it and the contraindications. They're some of the things that we certainly try to edu educate on with the patient. And then we look at some of the challenges. Well, the direction and the depth of the graph are quite different to scalp hair. Chest hair can be all different angles and actually beard hair follows different directions. So you need to have a very good surgeon for this. Trying to get the graft in the antigen phase, shaving a few weeks prior, and then you, any hairs that are breaking through the skin, we know we're in the antigen phase to harvest. Avoiding scarring. This comes into um, the type of FUE tools used, the skill of the surgeon, the size of the punches. And especially when you're going into visible areas such as the beard, you wish to really try to avoid scarring for the patient. Keep in mind you're going to need more probably body hair flicker units in order to give you a pleasing result purely by the fact of the coarseness can be different. It won't be three or four follicular um, hairs per follicular unit. It can be one or two. So you need to take into account those facts as well and take into account the medication the patient is on if they're on DHT blockers, how that will actually affect their body hair. And lastly, to get a natural result with body hair results, the best thing is to try to blend it and make sure that you deploy those follicular units in the best part of the scalp to give that person the most natural result. So there's some of the things in this presentation you can ponder and think about with, with body hair. And, and of course, feel free to contact us with your case if you're wishing to go down that route. And we'll be more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching. Please press the like button. And um, we are very happy to uh, give consultations to those who wish it. So please follow the link and why not click for your free personal consultation with Dr. Bazanga. Thanks again for watching and we hope to see you soon.